Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Nathan Adams. Thanks for being on the show, Nathan. You bet, Whitney. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I know. Pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, Nathan is the president of Chassis Media, a full service production and distribution company, and has more than 20 years of experience in the entertainment industry as a writer, producer, and director. He's a real estate investor. He owns several buildings outside of California and invests in Los Angeles uh, with a local syndicator there. So, Nathan, thank you again for your time today. And, and But tell the listeners a little more about who you are, maybe what you do, and let's dive in. Sure. Uh, well, I, uh, like you said, I, I, we have a production company and a distribution company. So we make films, uh, documentaries, we do branded content. We also have a distribution company that represents films, meaning we sell them to distributors and go to markets around the world. And we have our own channel on Pluto TV. A lot of the stuff that we do is automotive related, car related, so like we have three different docs on Netflix right now. All of them have something to do with cars. Uh, one is about Carol Shelby. One is about uh, the Ford versus Ferrari story called the 24 hour war. One is called uppity with this poster behind me about the first black driver to race in the Indy 500. And, you know, I got into real estate investing because there's, you know, there's no 401k in my business. <laughs> so you kind of have to create your own. And, you know, for me, I, my job, it, it pays well, but it doesn't really, you know, there, there's not a lot of time for me. So the syndication made sense. I did, I do have two buildings in Montana where I grew up, um, that two commercial buildings there, uh, that I have a friend who manages them for me. And I kind of do a little more hands-on stuff with that, but the syndication, I did want to invest in Los Angeles and it's a very complicated market. Um, because it's very difficult to find things that cash flow here. So I had a friend who is an executive producer, a family guy, and he'd been investing here since like 2002. And he's kind of got a really incredible formula for what he does. And, you know, I used to have a really long commute to and from work, uh, 45 minutes each way. So I would listen to a, pod, a real estate podcast on the way to work. And on the way home, if I didn't have calls. So that's how I educated myself. Well, that was going to be one of my questions about, uh, as far as, you know, how you educated yourself and made yourself comfortable to jump into real estate. But first, why, why real estate? You know, there's other things you could have invested in or maybe built your own 401k. But, you know, why, why real estate? You know, I, I, I've always been a person who, I, I, you know, especially based on the field I chose to work in of, of controlling my own destiny. Mm -hmm. You know, the field that I work in is extremely competitive. We'll say that, uh, you know, and I just, I like the, I, I've, I've never liked the stock market. I've never had good luck with it and never really trusted it. So, you know, real estate has always been something that, is tangible. And, you know, the more that I learned about it, the more that I liked it, you know, I've read a lot and tried to learn about the stock market, but the more that I learned about it, I kind of realized like, you know, if you're not the guy on the inside that knows all the information, then you're just sort of throwing darts at a board. So, you know, learning about real estate, though, is something that it seems like, you know, this light finally goes off for most people. It's like, oh, wow, you know, there's so many people that's created wealth in this business. Was there a specific book or something that kind of opened your eyes to it and, and kind of laid out your plan for moving forward and in investing in real estate? You know, I started listening to, um, I, I just knew I had to do something because, I, you know, like I said, my, my time is very limited. I have two small kids. I run two companies. I run a production company and a distribution company. And I also produce and direct a lot of the films we make. So yeah. it, it, I don't have a ton of time. So, you know, I realized that I, I needed to find something and I, and I wanted to find something I was passionate about and I always liked real estate. So I started listening to this podcast, Bigger Pockets, and then I got into realizing that, oh, I need just 
focus on commercial real estate and multifamily. And that's really all that I'm interested in, I'm not interested in single family homes or, or land or any of that, you know, just wanted to learn about multifamily. So I, I turned my focus toward podcasts and conversations and things that I could listen to and learn about that. Okay. And then, so syndication and, and, you know, multifamily, I mean, it's obviously that's what we're focused on and, and on the show as well. Uh, and so, you know, moving into that direction as an investor, you know, how did you, how did you pick a, an operator that you knew you wanted to partner with? You know, Mark, uh, we, we invested in 25 units in Koreatown in Los Angeles and, you know, I knew Mark's track record and I really, the way that he picks properties made a lot of sense to me. He does a lot of research about areas and, you know, growth areas and areas that are, are big on urban development here. Cause Los Angeles is one of those places where, you know, one block you can have a $4 million house and two blocks away, it's almost gangland. You know, it's, it's a very, you know, it's very interesting in that way, especially going through, you know, uh, Hollywood and when you start to move east, you get to areas that are extremely wealthy, like Hancock Park, and then in two blocks you're in East LA and it, it's kind of dangerous, you know. So, you know, and, and then you're in Koreatown and it's not. And, you know, it's, it's, it's very sort of street by street here. So if you're real good at doing your research and, and looking at the square foot price of properties and what you're buying. And, you know, so, so I just believed in what Mark had done and, you know, our, our syndication is going very well. I'm, I'm very nice. happy with, with everything that's happened so far. And, and I really like Mark as a person. I think you also invest in the person, you know, you, you invest in uh, what, what that person you know, has done and has continued to do. And, you know, I liked that Mark had been through the 2008 crash and knew all about that and, you know, and didn't lose money. You know, he said he had bought some buildings like right before it crashed with the guys who worked on family guy with him. And he was like, you know, I don't want to go back to work and have to lose these guys money, but he didn't, you know? So, you know, that investor and operator relationship like you have w with this operator, how did, how did you all build that relationship? I just wondered if, if you kind of paint us a little picture because I know people that are listening that are, that are trying to become a great operator, uh, you know, or the passive investors as well, you know, they're thinking, okay, you know, how do I express that to an investor to show that, that I'm that person that they need to invest with just like this operator did with you? Yeah. I mean, the good, the good thing about me was – you know, I analyzed a ton of properties. I was good with the math. I knew, you know, uh, I know all that stuff and, and I do it myself. So I wasn't just a person who was going to put money in who really didn't know that much about real estate. And, you know, for me, I was comfortable because Mark had had so much success here. So, you know, he, he had a very proven track record investing in Los Angeles, which like I said, is, it's not easy. I, I know a lot of people who tried and, you know, if, if you don't do it right, because there's so much rent control here and difficulty with permits and it's, you know, it's just a kind of difficult place to invest. Like personally, so. I don't really want to invest here. I find it much easier in Montana where I invest. Um, but he, you know, you can't, you don't have appreciation like you have here. You know, it's extraordinary here how, you know, and the, the laws of buying people out of their units and how that works and, and the math that goes into factoring, whether it's worth paying them the money to buy them out because it's significant, Wow. you know, and, and also, you know, I, I think when, when you find, look for an operator, you, you have to find someone you're comfortable with. The thing I like too is Mark is in my business. You know, Mark is, and, and it's, you know, he, he has a full-time job like I do, but he is also a syndicator. And, you know, the other thing that I looked for is Mark puts a tremendous amount of his own money in the deal. So Mark has a lot of skin in the game. Yeah. You know, 
So there's not, you know, Mark's not just chasing me down to get my money and invest it. He's putting his own money much more than I did in the deal, you know? And so to me, that tells me that he hundred percent believes in this deal. For sure. It shows a great alignment of interest, uh, no doubt. Uh, and so, you know, Nathan, you know, just going through this, the real estate business, getting into the real estate, finding an operator, investing in a syndication, what's, what's been the hardest part of this syndication process or journey for you? You know, this, the syndicate, as a passive investor, it's fantastic because I really don't have to do a lot. You know, I talked to Mark and he kind of is helping me. I, the other reason I did it is I wanted to learn more about it. You know, I, I wanted to learn the process and, you know, the, the loan approval and what you have to go through and, you know, j- just uh, to get some more education. That was part of why I invested. Um, and it's been great for me to learn, but it's also, you know, there's also a lot of work and busy work that I know Mark has to do that is great that I'm not doing it. Like, well, right. you know, well, well, I'm refinancing one of my own properties right now. And uh, we just had our syndication refinanced also. And I got a chunk of my money back, you know, from the refi. And, you know, that was great. I was like, wow, you know, it was because it literally was 12 months after I invested and we'd already refied and it was significantly, you know, we, we were fortunate and, you know, multiple people moved out rather than being bought out. And, it, you know, we just had a lot of fortunate things happen with the properties. Um, but, you know, I mean, I know all the headaches I'm going through refinancing my own property and burring it. And, you know, it's the same thing like these buildings, you know, there's remodeling going on. There's a lot of work going on and, you know, talking to contractors and dealing with stuff and, and, you know, that's time consuming. And and frankly, as an investor, like I'm happy that I'm giving my money to someone that I trust that I know I'm going to get a good return on it. And I don't have to, I mean, there's a part of me that depending on how this goes, you know, later I could become a person who did a lot more passive investing in good syndicators just because I don't have that much time. And, you know, once I do the math on my own investments where, you know, if I'm making, let's say 24% on the burrs that I'm doing and I'm making 18% on, you know, just being a passive investor in a syndication, then, uh, you know, that 6%, the amount of time that I put in to get that, it's not worth it. Right. Right. Uh, Nathan, is there, I know you said you're operating two businesses right now and, and is there a way that you've recently improved your business or your operations that we could also apply to ours? You know, I'm, I'm really trying to, to, uh, I think the word they use is systematize and, and I'm really trying to, you know, I, I, I create a lot of systems in what I do, especially in the distribution business because it's a lot of repeating the same functionality to distribute content and deliver content and have content delivered to us for our own channel. So, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to do that. And then, you know, we're growing also. And, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm being more careful about who I hire and who I work with. I think, you know, there was a time I didn't realize how important that was you know, and that kind of everyone that you have in your office, because we're kind of a lean and mean operation. And that, you know, everyone that works with and for you is on the same page and kind of, you know, working in the same unit. Hmm. Is there a way that you've improved your hiring process? Maybe one thing that you've changed, you know, recently that helps you to hire that person that's going to be a part of that unit? I think... I've just learned to ask better questions when I'm interviewing people and learning about their organizational skills and asking their previous employers about them and, you know, kind of, kind of really, for me, um, because I I am more of a creative person than I am organized. So organized people help me a lot. And I've realized that it's also part of realizing like a little bit of, what are you good at and what do you need help with? Mm. You know, in the beginning, you know, I used to be like, oh, I don't need help with anything. That's absolutely not true. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of places that I had to realize like, Hey, you're not very good at this. Once you have somebody who's good at that, do that. And then you do what you're good at. 
and, and getting into that headspace a little better. And, and that has really helped me also. What's the, the number one thing that's contributed to your success? Uh, work ethic. I grew, then, up, I grew up working on a farm and I wrestled for 20 some years all through college. And I think that the work ethic that I learned as a wrestler and the ability to kind of stick to what I got to do and, mm. and no matter what, and if I get knocked down, then I just get up again and keep going. And that's how I do it. And, and that's been a big, because my business is, it's not a business that works like any other business. You know, when people tell me, or, you know, when you talk to people about Hollywood or show business or, or how this business works, it's a, it's a very unique business. And, and I see thousands and thousands of people that come here and fail and can't make, you know, and it, it, yeah. you know, it's just a tough, it's a tough business. It doesn't matter how much skill you have if you give up. No, yeah. no. And, and, you know, it's, and, and, you know, the other thing is I see tons of very, very skilled, very creative people, you know, who, who like you said, you, you can only, you know, some people can only pick themselves up so many times. And some people, once they receive a slight bit of rejection, they, they, they can't take it. Yeah. You know, and if you want to be in a creative field, then you got to toughen up. You can't. You know, in any, I think in any field, but, you know, you have to have a thick skin in this business because, you know, I used to be a writer and I fixed other people's scripts. And, you know, when you give someone your material, 10 people are going to like it, you know, two people are going to really love it and three people are going to hate it, think it's terrible. So you have to understand that what you do and what you have is not everyone's cup of tea and hmm. this vice versa, you know. And how do you like to give back? You know, I do uh, a lot with some organizations uh, called Beat the Streets. I, for me, I, I try to give back a lot in uh, the sport of wrestling because it gave so much to me. Mm. Uh, that's how I got out of the small town I grew up in. I got a scholarship and probably wouldn't have got out of there without it. And so there's an organization here called Beat the Streets, uh, which helps inner city kids by giving them a place to go, no gangs. You know, th th they get to wrestle. It's boys and girls. And girls wrestling is one of the fastest growing sports in America. So uh, it's, it's been really cool working with them and I help them make videos for them. You know, I don't charge for that. I just do it because I love it and I love what they're doing. And oh. I try to help with USA Wrestling and and – those organizations. So that's, that's where I try to give back. Awesome, Nathan. Well, I appreciate your time today. I appreciate you sharing just a little bit from your industry and becoming a passive investor and why real estate, why syndication, why the operator that you chose, and, and then just how you're moving forward in that as well and, and the way you give back. But tell, tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you. Sure. Uh, I am uh, on Twitter and Instagram at Nate Adams two six. Uh, I am if you want to contact me, you can hit me up at nate at chassismedia.com. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.